make this official. Michelle Venard, welcome to Yoga Talks with Yoga Factory Online. I'm honored. Honored and my pleasure and wonderful to see you, all of you. You too. Thank you for having me. Yes. We were just chatting a little bit before we, we got started about, you know, how you are and how your studio is doing. Um, you've got a wonderful community out in San Jose, California. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your studio has been there. I was just reading on your bio. You opened in 2003. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So almost 20 years now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> chills, right? Yeah. Easy to think about, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I started the yoga, it's so funny when I say it this way, I started yoga in 1998. And, you know, when I talk to people that are younger than me to hear, you know, the, to see their faces when I say 1998, it's like, oh my God, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, yeah, I started in 98. Uh, um, after my mom had passed away, I uh, was, you know, devastated. I, I think you may know, but many people may not know that my mom had Alzheimer's at age 49 and she died at age 54. And uh, she was my best mm -hmm. friend and it was extremely devastating. And uh, I worked for a restaurant company at the time that I, I truly loved. Um, and I wound up just pouring myself into my work and my friends were, knew that I was very stressed out. I, I I also, I think when someone that close to you passes away, especially a, a parent, you know, you feel, you can't help but feel abandoned and confused and lost. And um, I was on my way home from um, Denver. I had opened two restaurants there. And I just remember looking at an in-flight magazine, Zeb, and there was a Bikram Yoga article um, I didn't know it was Bikram Yoga, but I, I just remember the next morning waking up in my, my little 400 square foot apartment in San Francisco and I went into the, the yellow pages. Do you remember that, Zeb, when there was yellow pages? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, what is, oh yeah, those big bricks that we used to. Yeah. And I, I looked up yoga and I found uh, yoga on Filbert Street. Mm -hmm. It happened to be Tony Sanchez's. Um, awesome. So that's, and I, I remember my first class, I, I felt a connection to myself, like a, a way of maybe sorting some of the grief. And then that's just put me on this trajectory of, um, that I'm on now. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. that was your first experience in yoga or <laughs> had you been doing it before that? No, that was my very first experience. That's amazing. He's one yeah. of the living legends of... of well, if art. I can continue, it's a funny story. I, I had him for, I took the yoga challenge, right? I, if you remember, he does uh, 42 postures. Back then, it was 42 postures in a room that was probably 90, 95, you know, mm -hmm. really small room. And um, I, uh, the Ilfra and I was the restaurant company that I worked for at the time. And I, I remember asking him, he would laugh because he, he was behind the desk. He would always read the paper and he would just put down the paper and have you check in. So, and, and, you know, he was very nice and, and not, not extremely outgoing, but, you know, just nice with everybody, but just deliberate in what he did. And then I, I remember though, I was opening restaurants again and, and um, honest to God, Zeb, I asked him. I said, you know, I'm traveling, I'm opening restaurants, where should I go to do yoga in like Seattle? And he said, anywhere you see a Bikram Yoga College of India, you're fine. Hmm. And I remember saying, College of India, what is that? You know, like, <laughs> and that's how I found, um, I, I opened two restaurants in Seattle and, um, uh, I made a deal back then, of course, there was an Uber and I, I made a deal with a taxi driver to take me to and from Seattle to Kirkland to take a yoga class. And that's when I met uh, Greg. Is that his name, Greg? Greg Gamuccio. From Yo yoga for the People back yeah. then. He owned. It, he owned. And I, th this is a, to, to bring us back to Tony. He had a poster of Tony hanging up. And I said, oh my gosh, that's my teacher. And I didn't know Tony was Tony. Isn't that funny? 
Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, that's your teacher. He's like, oh, yeah, Tony Scott. And then I started to know a little bit more about Bikram. And then that's when I came back after opening those restaurants. I came back to San Francisco. I still went to Tony, but that's when I found Mary Zeb. Mm -hmm. That's when I, when I looked up Bikram Yoga and I found Mary Jarvis. And then I started to go to Global Yoga on Chestnut Street. That's, yeah. that's where I started, too. So that's very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, I, and we've talked about this before, but I started my practice in San Francisco much later than you, um, in 2007-ish. And, you know, Funky Door and Global okay. Yoga and Tony, I think Tony was not there at that point, but, um, so yeah, I was just a little bit behind, behind your curve. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember you though. I remember you with um, Casper. You guys would come into Global Yoga. You guys may not know this, but these two would be there all the time training, right? And I remember taking classes with you sometimes because if 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 you guys don't know, how big do you think Mary's studio was? Uh, that room was like oh, maybe nine hundred square feet, yeah. maybe a thousand. It was not very big, and she would fit like 60 of us <laughs> in there yep. with old fashioned heaters in the back. And remember she used to make teachers go in the back. Yep. Right. You know, and yeah. If you up too high or too far in a back bend, you'd hit your hand on the heater and yep. yep. And she too, right. She would just sit on the little edge of the window or the little steps, right. That she had. Yep. And then once in a while, open the window a little bit. <laughs> Little, yeah. little breath of fresh air. Yeah. Absolutely. Those were good days. Those were. Those and were. don't forget the bathroom that was in the hot room. Yes. Yes. That's right. She had a bathroom in there. Oh, isn't that funny? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I, gosh, I remember dying in that class. Oh, I miss that so much. I just miss dying in the heat, you know? <laughs> yeah. She, she, um, I, I remember the first classes that I had with her. I, I you know, she has a, a tendency to just push you, right? And just keep calling your name and get you to do this, that, and the other. And I, and it, yeah. I, I just loved it, you know, it in always. In the most compassionate way, though. Totally. Like, it's full of love, but at the same time, you, you're like right. killing yourself in a posture. You're like, right. how is this happening? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't care that there was, you know, no room in that. You just wanted to be with her. You know, you just wanted to take the class and, and be with her. And then we would all, um, we would all get our mats. And I, and I just remember, you know, a lot of people too, then going over. Remember the Grove was really popular and used to just sit outside after having a really good class. And yep. yeah, those were, that was the height of, that was the real height of Bikram Yoga back then, huh? Yes, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Those are good days. Yeah. Um, so you, you went to teacher training. You became a yoga teacher in 2001, correct? That's correct. Yeah. And then you opened your studio in 2003. Right. In San Francisco, it was one of the hubs of, especially of hot yoga, but of yoga in general. Right. Um, so right. that must have been interesting, opening... Yeah opening yeah. your studio and it was that was long before yoga was really super popular so. absolutely it, it was I um I really didn't know that I was going to open up a yoga studio I I because of my mom's passing um I know this sounds a little strange but the even though I loved what I was doing um I knew that uh the work that I was in, was doing was 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 coming to an end. It just it didn't have the meaning. Um, I've had a, a lot of loss in my life. I lost a sister. I lost a, a good friend, and of course, my mom being close to me. And then, of course, you know, I and and it's interesting. It's a good teacher for for us, right? You know, we and I, my mom's passing had a profound effect on um, the trajectory of what how I wanted the rest of my life to be. And uh, I, I got involved in hospice. I was a hospice volunteer for a year. Um, my mom passed away in my arms and I had a, 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 a beautiful feeling of, of 
this transition that my mom went through. And I, I felt compelled to want to share that feeling with people who were passing also that it, it wasn't this scary thing. So this, this, I became a volunteer and San Francisco's huge. They have a huge hospice organization and they don't have a lot of money for volunteers. And at the same time that my mom had, had passed away, I, I rekindled a lot of passions that I had. I went and bought a Harley and rode a motorcycle. I went back and did ballet lessons. I, I know, right? You know, and then I, I used my grandfather's old camera and I learned a lot about photography. I mean, I, you name it, Zeb, I, I, I was just, I was, I was like, I knew life was precious and I was just hugging it up, right? You know, yeah, and well, yeah. When we lose someone, it sort of like brings that into focus. So, it, boom, the, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, uh, I knew that sometimes those feelings naturally fade. And so I wanted to take advantage of this sweet spot I was in on just, I mean, I, I just had this heightened level of living, you know, right? So, so um, I, I, I thought I was, I started to create handmade cards and I had a card line um, of 25 cards and I would write prose and poetry in these cards with my photography and um i got into french made ribbon and i manually did these cards and i was in card shows if you can believe this right this is not many people know this stuff and uh at the same time i was a concierge for um uh, one post on montgomery street and i'm i'm doing yoga not knowing yoga is going to be really where i'm going to go in in my life but um, as a hospice volunteer, then I decided to give a portion of the card money that I made to volunteers so they could buy things for their, their patients. Um, you know, cause face it, I mean, if these patients want to have Coca-Cola and smoke cigarettes, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, and I, I think it was during that time that I was also doing yoga and I was going to a, 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 a family reunion in the East Coast and I, I picked up a, what I thought was a Bikram seminar and it happened to be all about Bikram's teacher training. And I just remember being on that flight, Zeb, just in my head going, oh no, I don't wanna, I thought this was a seminar, but I kept thinking about, wow, what would it be like to be a teacher? And then, by the time we landed, I, I knew that I was, I was going to go. I, I just couldn't stop thinking about it, you know? So, yeah, right? You know, it, you know, it, it, it's it's amazing it, how the course of your life can change. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I tell people that because I think people ask me sometimes, as I'm sure you too, right, as a, as a business owner, you know, I, from the time my mom died to opening up BYSJ 2003, that's a lot of time. You know, there's a lot of days where you scratch your head going, what are you doing? But there's a, there's a faith that you have to, perseverance, that you have to just trust, right? It's not pretty, it can be messy, and, and you just keep listening. And, you know, there are days where it's harder than other days, but um, uh, I, I never, I never, I, I think once I knew then that I was going to teacher training, I also knew that I would be opening up a, a yoga studio. Right. Yeah. And I just stayed, I just stayed on that, on that course, you know, yeah. it was sort of the natural, the next thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, it allowed me to still, um, I felt like I could bring all my business savvy from all the restaurants that I opened to this. And, you know, I also knew my card business was really a hobby. wasn't really any, you know, yeah. um, it wasn't going to sustain you. Yeah. 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 And just this idea of seeing people in, in back in 98, um, especially when yoga was not a big deal. I mean, it, 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 and of course it's so great that it is now, but I, there was this heightened, you, you saw what it was doing for people, not just, you just, you just saw every walk of life in the room and what it was doing for everybody. And that was so inspiring. 
the dramatic right. shift that it can make in a person. Exactly. There was nothing like this ever. Like, where did this come from? This magnificent tool that connects people to themselves, to each other, bringing out the best in who they are. And of course, you hear Mary talking, right? And it just got you like, wow, the world needs to know this, right? You know, so... Yeah. And then, of course, when I went looking around, you know, back then people were looking at me like, you know, A, I'm a woman. B, B they thought yoga was a fad. They called it yogurt. They didn't, couldn't <laughs> say, right? You know, so, um, so, so yeah, you know, it was pioneering something that you knew was in, was going to be infectious because it was doing something so good for the human being. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And plus, I mean, you're volunteering with hospice and like, it's sort of like taking all these different aspects that were, you were passionate about, like helping people and your business savvy and putting them together into one, one pot. Yeah. And you know, I, I, and you know this and all of you that take yoga, right? We, I did this. Sometimes you think that, you know, the quality of your life is always what you're, what's around you, what's in, what's in front of you, you know, and um, you don't need to, you don't need to be chasing a carrot all the time, like until you get this money or until you're, you know, I, I think that's the other thing that yoga did is it just helped you see a perspective of the quality that of the life that you have right now, right, right now. Right. And, and that was such a, a, a beautiful thing and it did that for me and I knew it could do that you know for every, just by doing 26 postures that was the other thing too it was like it's not it wasn't really rocket science it was just like just you just get people in a hot room to do this yoga and the magic happens within each person in their own way right so yeah Yep. Yeah, it, 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 it was amazing. It was, and I never lost, you know, I never lost uh, faith on, on that. I, I moved from, um, from, I lived in Walnut Creek. I had a condo there, but you know, I've lived out here in California 30 years and a lot of my life was down here in the, in the South Bay in Los Gatos. So I wanted to come back down here and be with more of my friends and, and find a place to, to start a yoga studio. So that's, that's how I got my life out of San Francisco because I was there for Il Fernayo. That's the restaurant company I worked for. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I just sold everything, everything, I sold everything, you yeah. know, and I, I came down. And down. San Jose now is sort of the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, it is. Well, it wasn't Great. back then though, was it? No. no. Yeah. Not, not to the extent that it is now. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, oh my gosh. The, the place the to be with a lot of movers and shakers. Yeah, and and um, you know a lot of lot of lot of like you with your students, you don't really know what they do. You know, every once in a while, you you catch what they do, but most likely, most of them work at you know Apple Campus or Google. Back when we opened, uh, you know, Google didn't exist. It was uh, that was Silicon Graphics. I don't know if you guys remember Silicon Graphics was the first graphics card. And they were like, you know, they were the cool shit back then, right? And, and they're gone. And now Google has that, that over by Shoreline. And now Google campus has even moved closer, yeah. uh, you know. And now, of course, the Apple campus is, is like not even five miles away. And yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's really gone crazy. You know, yeah, but it's still, I mean, like you were saying, well, a lot of times you students come in and you're not, you don't even know... No. their their story what they do right. um so they could be like a ceo of a super giant tech company or something and they're just there to do yoga which is it's beautiful it is beautiful i i know i'm i'm like you i prefer it you know everybody's toes and heels on the line you know <laughs> everybody's right everybody's there together yeah. yeah yeah and honestly i think they appreciate that too right you know it's all it's why i love all the talk in the lobby and stuff like that but once we're in the room it's business right everybody's you know looking in the mirror looking at their own shit loving who they are working hard kicking out you know and just yeah. you know it's, all, it's yeah it's it's and 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 one of the things i noticed years ago um in and is you know i saw a lot of you know different ethnicities 
uh, religious backgrounds that I had known talking and they were friends. And I, I just, I thought to myself, no other place would they be talking with each other, yeah. right? You know, we yep. just take down all, a, any labels, any, any codes. Any, where people can just be, yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the, the great things about yoga studios. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm a hundred, I a hundred percent agree. I love, I love that. I mean, you really are talking to that person, right? Yep. You know, not nothing. And, and I think that they love coming in knowing too that none of that, you know. Yep. You know. Leave it at the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much pressure oh. out there, yeah. So back in 2007, 2008, I remember coming to your, your studio. I, I was practicing in San Francisco. Yeah. But it was my first yoga competition. And yeah. I remember we took all, my, all of my fellow yogis and I took a field trip down to your studio in San Jose. And we, we did the yoga competition and we got to practice at your school and I remember being really impressed by your the just the feel and the vibe at your yoga school. Aww. And you know, you since then you've moved to a, a larger space. Yeah. And I had the chance to visit there and teach and it's amazing. And now you've moved again to a yeah. sort of shifted gears again. Um but you know, I your the way that you plan and design your schools and your amazing staff, your crew that you know, they're just they work together really well, and you you always put out these amazing newsletters and your blog and your your thoughts and it's it's just amazing to to see you from afar like building this this energy and I, I wonder. Have you always been like motivated like that, or is it something that you've had to to work on? Like, how how do you do it? How do you keep that fire going? Um, uh, I think I'm a couple things. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate that, and and vice versa. I mean, I. I, I so admire you and watch you closely too and what you do and how you stand for your, for your people. Uh, Zeb, I, I think I'm, I'm a couple things. I, I'm definitely hardwired as a uh, optimist. Um, I'm also very hardwired in that I love people. I, 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 I don't, I often think of um, talents that maybe I have and I, you know, sometimes you, you know, especially when you're, you know, I, 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 I do a lot of reflection and meditating and whatnot. And I, I, I feel very blessed that uh, I just, I love people. And uh, I, I'm also like, I, I shared with you, I've just have been through uh, experiences in life of which we all have experiences and mine have to be through, I have, my sister died. I was telling you, my, my mom died and I, I had a best friend die. So um, my parents had a terrible divorce. So I, um, and I, I'm not, not trying to play victim here cause I, I don't, but I, I feel like that also, um, 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 uh, kind of shaped your, yeah, I, I feel like I developed a, a very, I think I've always had it, but I think that compassionate, component of who I am, um, I, I, I really grew that more with the experiences that, that I had been through. And, um, um, and I happened to, besides the, the hardwiring part and just, you know, our, my own background and, and owning all of that and using it as grist for the mill of who I am, I also have been blessed with amazing mentors. Absolutely. I, I, I worked for um, Marriott and when I first graduated from college and um, I happened to work for, uh, yeah, uh, for Residence Inn before they were bought by Marriott. And I, I was in on a, a 
a group of, of executives that were pioneers in this extended stay world. You know what I mean? It was the first time that you heard it. What's extended stay? Well, it was a hotel room that had a kitchen, you know, and, a, and, and we were like on the cusp of that. It was, it was meetings together on, on what we could do to, to, to make this product better. It was, it was, but it always had a compassionate component on, 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 on a way that we could do it that, that helped and served. Right. And then I go into Il Fernayo and Il Fernayo is authentic Italian and my mentors there, uh, you know, I, I was on a, a, a team and we opened 17 restaurants and, you know, and, uh, you know, I learned a lot about, you know, sticking to, um, you know, what it means to be authentic Italian, but they also cared for their employees. You know what I mean? So, um, so this is a long winded way to, to, to answer your question, but um, I, I think it's it's a combination. Probably, you know, I, I am sort of the, uh, that way, but I also have been in environments that have yeah. stressed that that part of me. You know, I still, I mean, I to this day, I haven't worked for Il Fernando in 22, 23 years, and I'm still in touch with the chairman. I, I still, you know, so how how great is is that? That uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and and you know, and I I, I also feel blessed too, uh, Zeb. There's a, a a very strong part of me that um, uh, knows how to uh, lead and and build a team um, where uh, and Ilf and I was this way. They always had uh, a committee of people where you would talk about things, but there was always one person to make the final decision, and it was. It was encouraged actually to have some creative tension that was important to kind of bring you know all points and then come together on something and you backed that decision it that was a it, and i think about that because that's a tool i use heavily now yeah. i mean you know i mean there's a t lots of opinions and stuff out there yeah right, too so um yeah that's great that's a process that I, I've sort of come to naturally running, you know, a studio here. Um, and it's something that I, you know, always try to improve upon. But yeah, listening and paying attention and using that group dynamic, because there are, there's so many ideas and so many of them are good ideas. Yes. You can't just be one person. No. no. Making all the rules. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's better to have, you know, also uh people doing things that that do it better than you do that's exactly and to, and to not be you know a, attached to that at all because you want to have a, a goal together and that goal together right is to bring more people to do yoga that's that's my goal whether it's online or you know with studios or whatever just more people to do yoga when you're constantly having you know that then then you chip away at it and there's you know it's amazing you know, um, you don't, you don't get stuck on an ego thing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause yeah, there, there's, it's really easy for people to get stuck there yep. and then the energy can't move forward. No, it doesn't, it, it doesn't. In your way. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. hundred percent. And I, and I got to see that firsthand at residence in and see that, you know, at, at Il Fernayo too. So I'm, I'm blessed in that way. I feel like I have a business background that helped me to be here too. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I right actually when I was in college, I started working for Marriott for hotel chain. Ah. And then as I transitioned, I graduated from college, they bought Ritz Carlton <gasps> and I started working for them. And, especially with Ritz Carlton, it's so focused on service and so focused on caring for the, the guests and the clients. Um, and I, they, they did a really good job of instilling that yeah. in me. And I think that, that kind of training, that sort of awareness could really serve, you know, not just yoga teachers, but really everybody, just like treating everybody fairly, treating everybody kindly. Right, right. It, it's good across the board. Right. Well, no wonder then how you are too. You had that good training. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, and I did concierge too, right? And that that's also right, you know, too. Yeah. And I think there's a, you know, and, and, and also too, to your credit, and and mine and, and everyone here too. I think it's also uh, it, your that your part of your character also drew you, you know, to that where you want to serve, right? Yeah. You have a huge sense of satisfaction and fulfillment, you know, when we do that, you know, and and that's what we want to do even on on the podium, right? You know, you know, yep. I think about that now actually, Zeb. I mean, all you know, hopefully with all the teachers and and us included, we've done you know, a, a, a good enough job where, you know, people are managing a struggle they're in because, you know, in the yoga class, it's really what you're doing. You're managing, you know, a, a struggle, right? You're not, you're, you're stretching your body, you know, and also to clearing your mind and, but involved in a, in a resistance sometimes, right? And, and, yeah. and, and breathing through that and, you know, and here we are in a real live situation <laughs> of amazing struggle and resistance. And so how are we doing in our yoga pose? Right. right? You know, and, and that's why I'm such a believer, even with all of this COVID stuff with regards to, you know, now, now I don't know about you, but I, I'm hearing so many people talk about immunity and respiratory and, 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 and you know, capacity of your lungs and oxygen. I mean, and that's becoming an everyday part of our language. And it's like, oh my God, good, because maybe that'll get people to realize that's what the yoga is helping you do, yeah. you know, to create this, you know, immune competence, right? So. And I, I just read an article yesterday that was, you know, the research is still being done, but they were saying that the virus itself doesn't do well in heat or humidity which is exactly the environment that we teach in a lot of the time. So, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, this, this, we, I can't wait for you to come visit our, our studio. Please come, please come this, this next year that, that yes. not 2021. Can you believe that this is 2020? I, I pinch myself. I still find this all so surreal. If someone would have said to me in December, you're going to open in January, but you're going to shut in March. <laughs> Right? Isn't that just crazy? Um, but yes, our our yoga rooms, and, uh, because of you know our air, the, the the technology now, the air quality and the filtration. I mean, that room couldn't be even. It's ironic actually that we can't be in that room because it's probably the safest room to be in. Right. Right, right now, yeah. but yeah, I I'm I'm hopeful that that people start to realize that that's why we do the live breathing every morning too, is just, you know, you've got to work your lungs. You have to expand, you have to improve your lung capacity. If you, if you don't do that, then like anything, it will atrophy, right? It gets so it, important. Yeah. 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 I love that you're doing that. Michelle with her Facebook group is doing a live breathing exercise every morning and you're getting teachers from all over the world. All and over, it, including you coming yeah. up. Yep. I'm signed up for, what is it, March 30th, I'm gonna teach? You're doing, I think you're, are you doing April 30th? April 30th, you're doing, yes. yep, yep. So make sure you guys, you, 10 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you know, that sort of blew up. Uh, and again, with that idea, Zeb, right, that we're all in this together, that we can be in Sweden, we can be in Australia, that we can be yeah. in just fighting this idea that, okay, maybe it's not a class, but you know what, this is good for your lungs. And it's, we're doing it live, right, you know? And yeah. I love, you know, silver linings. We talk about that a lot, but I love that we're being forced right now to find new ways to communicate, new ways to get in touch and connecting even more all over the world. So I know, I know. Isn't that just, it's like ironic that we're quarantined, but yet, you know, we're, we're in many ways, we're closer than ever. I've talked to people, including you, right? And more now than I have yeah. you know, in the years that, yeah. Yeah, there, there is a lot of beautiful silver linings. And I, I honestly think that we'll come out of this hopefully better. Sometimes it takes something like this, right? And, and you know, and we have to really be in it to really kind of make a certain shift, right? Yeah. Where we need to shift. I think you know, the first two weeks was for me and probably you too, it was kind of, uh, I don't remember anything, you know, peaceful about it. It was, <laughs> it was quite crazy trying to figure out how to, 
a panic. There was more of a panic that this was, and sadness, like what the heck is that, right? Like, but now, um, you know, it, it's amazing how we adapt and we come into this new routine and maybe we can sit back a little bit and honor the, the time, this time that we're gifted with and then, you know, and go back with, with some of these, whatever we've, I'm not so sure. A lot of people think you learn something. Maybe some people do, maybe some people don't, but maybe this kind of exhale, right? Is, we can live with that a little bit, you know, in our, you know, day to day. That's a really important lesson to take away from this is um, just being okay with yeah. not, not moving all the time. Like right. we've gotten so used, myself included, like I travel so much now and I'm constantly going and to be forced to be in one place and to take a step back is not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, you know? <clears throat> right. We can use that. Yeah, right. I think, it, I think it is a way to ground ourselves more, right? Being, being in your own company, being in the, in the company that you keep. I'm sure your dog is probably like, what are you doing here all the time? <laughs> <laughs> She's loving it. Yep. Oh, that's good. That's good. I have a cat and my, my cat's done with me for sure. My cat can't wait for me to, you know, I'm cramping his style. It's like, okay, mom, I've had enough. <laughs> absolutely ruined my uh the one thing i i'm not really attached to to mats at all zeb but they gave us one in china that i love for some reason it's thin it's just my cat's completely ruined it completely uh, <laughs> yep i've had to get into the habit of rolling mine up because my cat will do the same thing oh see yeah. you're good i should be doing that yeah yep. I've gotten a little lazy. They love the texture of it, I think. Yes, right? Uh, yeah. So that's a great transition. What were you doing in China, Michelle? Oh. <laughs> oh. Yes. Uh, um, it's, it's, so for it's, those of you that don't know, yeah. Michelle, among many other things, was the 2018 International Women's Champion for the 50-plus division. Which is amazing. Wow. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it was, it was an, an amazing experience. You know, uh, I, I often, the competing part, Zeb, and you probably get this question and stuff too, you know, the, the why. I, I remember when competing first came out and I think it was 2005 and, and being good friends with Cynthia Ware you know, um, we had just done it together, but I, I, I just want to share one of the biggest takeaways for me when I first started to compete. It, it, it was uh, absolutely amazingly illuminating. Um, I think it was my first, my first few years, not my first one, but it's definitely early on that I was on stage doing back then, Zeb, remember, I think it was seven postures in three minutes, right? Yeah. And, um, all I remember in the silence of that room was hearing my own critical voice just beat me up. Mm. Why are you here? You didn't train enough. You're not worthy of doing this. And honestly, I abs I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? It took, and what's funny is I, it, it, I look back on that now and it probably was one of the most beautiful things to have happened because I didn't realize that that kind of critic was so powerful in me, you know? Yeah. Like I, there was no vote for myself. Here I am in standing head to knee. And all I kept hearing was voices that were sort of batting me down. And I did well. I remember getting off stage back then. They gave you a rose. And I just remember saying to my, my I, was, I was not sad, but I was like, I was grateful. And I, I, I knew that was the a start of a journey for yeah. me. And all of us, because we all have that. And, you know, people ask me if that ever goes away. I, I honestly don't know if it goes away. I think you become discerning and you start to recognize, you know, that maybe you're going to turn the volume off, off because some days it's louder than others. And, but it's not who you are. You become more discerning, you know, and, and, yeah. and know who you are. And, you know, I, and I bring that up because now we fast forward all the way to Beijing and, here I am on an international stage 
which was just absolutely fantastic. China was absolutely unbelievable how they were with all of us. And my thoughts were just excited and good and proud and couldn't wait to show you what I can do and happy and felt the crowd. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't mean that you're not nervous, you know, but that wasn't the dominating, right? Yeah. You know, and, um, and how so, many years was that, that journey? <laughs> Let's see. When was the first time you competed? Probably 12. Yeah. Probably, probably 10, 11 years, maybe yeah. 12. Yeah. So, I mean, just think about that, you, you listeners. Like, I mean, not that you have to get on stage and do a yoga competition, yeah. but just the, the mental shift from beating yourself up um, to getting on the stage and being excited about sharing your yoga practice and just the, the thrill of, you know, doing yoga for others. Yeah. 10, 12 years to, yeah. to make right. that shift. Yeah. Right. Not an overnight thing. No. And I, and you're right. And it can't be because the journey is, that's what it is, right. Is the journey. And I, and I, I do know for all of us, right. That, you know, you know, especially the yoga does this because it peels away all of those, you know, things that you, the doubts and stuff, right. And, and illuminates this, this soul, this, this irreplaceable, you know, unique imprint of who you are that will never grace the earth again. And just, you know, it, it empowers you to live out this contribution that you're intended to make, right? And you'd, and those, sometimes those things come in waves, right? And the doubts are heavier than the, but you, then that discerning part starts to grow, right? And you just know better. And it was just, it was nice to feel that on stage uh, in China. I, I will never forget that, yeah. that, you know, I didn't expect it. And so it was beautiful to, it was like, wow. Oh, and it was it was a big thing for, for, for me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I remember the years that I competed, you know, the, the, that moment when you walk off stage was always yeah. such, I mean, it was filled with so many things, adrenaline and emotion and you're like already thinking ahead to what you're going to do the next year. And, you know, just, and you, my friend, were the I was most proud of because you never gave up. <laughs> Always came back, but even in it, it didn't. And you could see in you on stage that that's not what your focus was. Your 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 development in your postures, which was indicative of the development of who you are, showed up. And and I'm sure you guys have seen Zeb, and if you haven't, go on. But it. It, you know, you were, you were, you were drawn to watching Zeb. That's not every competitor, right? You know, you're not drawn. You were very drawn, you know, in watching you, Zeb. So, Thank you. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it, and I, 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 you know, competing is a way of learning about yourself, you know, okay. that's very true. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there are a lot of sort of naysayers out there, you know, you can't compete in yoga and why would you ever try to do something like that? And um, I think, I think what you just said is the why, you know, ab ab it's, it's not really about competing yeah. and winning and beating other people. It's the, the further you, the more you do it, yeah. the more you learn about yourself. Right, right. And I always looked at it too as sharing your practice like the when you get up on stage and demonstrate hopefully there's maybe one or two people in the crowd that get inspired to start right. their own practice right yeah yeah and I, I remember many years where i'd get off stage and i i was a little bit mad at myself because i didn't show up for the posture do you did you ever have that yeah sometimes i would be like you know, you're, and your three minutes is done. You don't, you don't, you, you can't go back. <laughs> but I, I think I was rushing. I was, I was not in the moment that I, you know, that I wanted to be in. And it, and it was like, oh, wow, I missed, you don't want to miss your life, right? You, yeah. you, it was another, like, I don't, I didn't want to miss it. So then in the next year, I would make sure, okay, just show up, right? Yeah. Just be in it, you know? And That's a good lesson for just for life, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So is it, 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 yeah, you're right. It's a good, and there are other things that do that, but this, that was a good one for a barometer for, for, for me too. I think, you know, um, I've wrestled with this over the years. Um, and I, I think it's this yin and this yang all the time in, in ourselves that there's this idea that, you know, we lean back. Right. And, and that's a, that's a, that's like a nice, just, just lean back and let life come to you. And, you know, there's the invitation, that's that listening part, you know, but also there's this, there's this amazing authority in us, you know, to always, you know, be bold, right. To, right. Not from an ego point of view, but to, and so sometimes I think the competition helped with that, right. You, but you know, I, cause we're meant to be great, not mediocre. Right. You know, I, 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 you know, that's there, there's, there's, there's moments where it's like time to take the risk. Right. I, I, this is the other hardwired part of me that, you know, I'm one of those people that I, I ready, I, I fire and I aim later. I don't, you know, that, that's just, I've always kind of been that. And I, but I've had to learn Zeb though, that that's not always healthy. <laughs> right. But I, how many people do you know that sit in the aim part forever? Right. Right and just don't pull the trigger. Right. And you, and, and, and I've talked to people and I'm like, I'm not gonna tell you because there's a moment you're gonna know and you just gotta pull it and just whatever it is, you be behind it. It's okay, just, yep. just you know, you made the decision, don't question the decision, just go with that decision. And, 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 I, and, that, and I think that that's, a, again, the yoga helps you trust that, trust that right? You know, because it's never perfect, right? You know. There, 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 there's, but you know, the, it's, it's like the old saying in yoga class, you know, do you want to have a perfect yoga practice or a, a good one? You know, it's never going to be perfect. And you got to trust that whatever decision you made, you're capable of standing behind that decision and you'll have the tools, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a little bit of faith that it's, it's going to be okay. That is first mm -hmm. and foremost. I mean, I, I have a lot of that in, in my faith, and I think that has to grow. That, that has to be the thing. You have to, if you're going to lean back, that's what you're leaning back on. You're mm -hmm. leaning on, on, on faith. And isn't that true? Isn't that true? All is well, you know, it, right? It, it, it is. Absolutely. And you, have to, you have to trust that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I know. Good stuff. Yep. Um, so can I ask you a little bit of a, a tough question? Sure. <laughs> Ready. Um, so with the advent of the, the Me Too movement and, um, the recent documentary about Vikram Chowdhury that came out this past year, you know, a lot of studios have decided to shift away from supporting Vikram the person and um yeah uh it's it's a really tough situation I I know being a studio owner and a longtime practitioner of Vikram yoga but you know you I you're a very accomplished person you're a woman you're a leader in the community so what are your thoughts on that situation. I mean, your studio has been Bikram Yoga San Jose for 17 years. So I understand not wanting to shift away from something that's so powerful and so ingrained. Um, but you know, what, what are your thoughts on, on that whole situation? You know, it's such a, it's such a good question. And it, 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 it it is hard. Actually, it's more long than hard, right? Yeah. Because um, it, it just involves so much. Um, I, first, the first thing that comes to mind, number one, is uh, I was Bikram Yoga San Jose back when it was good, for yeah. lack of a better word, right? So I have, I'm, I'm fortunate. It's not like I've decided to open three years ago. Right. You know, I have a lot of credibility because we've been open for so long. You know, people know who we are as Bikram Yoga San Jose. So, so not that that makes it easier, but it kind of made it easier. Right. Yeah. 
And, um, and absolutely, I had to sit with this. I, you know, I, I had to sit with this a, a lot. And uh, because, and, and here we talk about a discerning tool, right? And, and, and being able to stand behind a decision. You know, one of the things that I, I, I have this thing that I do, and Oprah Winfrey taught me this, sounds crazy, but when I'm really in a uh, uh, clouded sort of place, I always go back to what I know for sure, what I know for sure. Mm -hmm. so what I knew for sure um, is that this yoga works. I, I knew that for sure. I, I knew that um, the, the 26 postures, two breathing exercises from the day I opened in 2003, you know, from my first class of 22 people to, you know, who I am today in 2020 and all those people that passed through and, and took that class, it was working. It was working. There was nothing. So Zeb, there was nothing wrong with the product. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and that was just, that's what I held on to. If, they, if there was one, one piece, you know, that, that is definitely it. Now, um, the name, uh, I, I don't, I don't at all, uh, dismiss anything. I mean, I, I'm sad by it. I, I, I feel like the, the, the whole Bikram, uh, community and and really what it it could have been is is fractured destroyed it it, it just it saddens me it, it ab I'm, I'm, and all that is disturbing um but it it's still it's still bikram yoga not not the man but it's still bikram the name i'm sorry that that was the name but um any other any other name means it there's room for it to be something else and and i want everyone clear on what it is that we deliver right. you know and you know my studio my god we're dialogue driven you know we say mama give me money i mean we're just like <laughs> you know i'm only 90 minutes in the room is you know and that that's the deliverable that i cho i love every kind of yoga i lo i love it all but that's what i've chosen to put my stake in the ground that i'm going to yeah deliver that yoga, you know, and when I, and, and honestly, when I went to Acapulco, I mean, I basically, I want to garner as much out of that man in terms of the, of this yoga so that I can continue to pass it on. Remember what I was sharing with you, my goal, if I stay to that goal, which is to bring more yoga to more people, especially Bikram yoga. See, for me, the Bikram yoga is a beginning yoga class. So I, I'm one of those people, I, I don't do privates. I like a lot of people. I wanna bring you in, you know, I like all kinds of new people coming in and I want your eyes to just go like this, like what just happened and I have this as a tool. And there's yeah. seven million people out there. Yeah. Now I, I do love it when somebody starts Bikram Yoga and then they just get on this trajectory of, the, of, of going into Ashtanga. When, to me, my work is done, got you in. You're now, now you're on a path. That's great. So you, you, does that answer it kind of somehow, you know? It's just... Yeah. And I, I agree with you on so many levels. Um, the, the method is so powerful and it's so therapeutic and I, it's such a great way for people to start their yoga practice, to introduce themselves to this philosophy and this practice that's thousands of years old. Um, look, at you, Deb. look at you now. It, yeah. It's amazing what you've done and how you've grown and where you take people and the amount of influence you have uh, in your world. It's, it's amazing. So yeah. I'm very proud of me and, and you're in, 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 yeah. I, started, I mean, I had a, a, a couple of brushes with yoga before, but really my practice started in a hot room in San Francisco, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's a lot of people too. And, and a lot of people stick with it and a lot of people go off and, 
yeah. you know, and, and, but again, right. We, we know this about Bikram yoga and, and, and I, when I, it's funny because when I went to Acapulco a couple of years ago, Zeb, the first lecture, it was hilarious. You guys, the first lecture he's up there and he says, look, I want to tell you guys, a lot of you guys think that you're going to get these big athletes and these celebrities that are going to come to, to Bikram yoga. They're, you're not all you're, you're going to get a lot of broken people. And that this is where they start. They're going to start with Bikram yoga. And, and you know, that's so beautiful and so true. I, I love it when it's just, it just, if, if, if someone can be just, just a little bit like myself, right? I looked in a yellow pages and, you know, and just got intrigued enough, you know, just that little bit of like, cause I mean, that's why we do Bikram basics, which is another thing I can talk to you about because there's still this intimidation about, about yoga and it's something for everyone, right? It accesses a whole nother, right? And, and, and a, 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 another, um, um, I don't know. I think it's a, I honestly think it's a portal into being who you're meant to be. Yeah. And yoga in general is yeah, that. In general, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. A, a way to start to realize yourself. And you may come in because you have a bad knee or a sore back or a, and, and that's great because you will, you will fix that. Right. But then you're going to, you're going to be teased and entertained to, to, to do, to bring out more of you. To start to dig deeper. Yeah. 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 Love it. I love I it. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I, I love it. I, I love it too. And, and you love seeing it or you, you just, you just know that, you know, being on the podium teaching that is, Oh, that's all you need to do. And in, in, in the yoga, something will birth in them on, on its own. Yep. Right? Yeah. I, on your, your webpage, you have a quote that says, um, I'm paraphrasing, but something to the effect of over, over the, your course of teaching and practicing and owning a studio, you've been acquiring wisdom that's useful for anyone to apply in harnessing harnessing your best and most satisfying self. Yeah. Um, what, you know, especially right now when everybody's worried and everybody's quarantined and um, just unsure of the future, you know, what, what would be just one little bit of wisdom that you could share? Mm. Um, just the first thing that comes to mind. Well, I, I just wrote a blog. So this is, you know. Yeah. I, the first thing that came to mind, if I can go back to that, and then I'll say what the blog is. Sure. One of the beautiful things about being in the yoga room with the mirrors is um, cause it can be very uncomfortable, right? First of all, the yoga is hard and you're in a hot room and then it's uncomfortable that you're, you know, you're looking in the mirror for 90 minutes and I, and, and you see an evolution in, in, in someone, including myself, right? There's a, you become familiar, right? With this, this person that you're looking at, right? And, and in that, uh, in that familiarity, right, there, there can be all sorts of things going on in your head, but because you're coming in day after day, you, you're, you, you're not necessarily liking, but you're starting to accept. That's, that's huge. That's, mm -hmm. that's a huge thing. Just by coming, you start the familiarity of, of seeing yourself and, and accepting and on, I think well before you like, I think you start to, um, I, I, I will say love, but you know, because of this accepting, you can take a breath and then just maybe, you know, you don't like it. There's some love there, but you start to understand. You, you start to break down this understanding, right? You're familiar, you're accepting, maybe you're starting to understand some behaviors or looking at them without judging them, right? And I, I think all of that is character building. All of that is absolutely 
and and I'm saying it, it like it happens like within you know this could be over a years years time right before you start to then be able to make some then 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 some changes in behaviors that no longer fit for you and I and I'm I'm always amazed I see it I've been remember I I've, I've been Bikram Yoga San Jose has been around 18 years. You know, I, I, I've seen people come and go and back and, and kids and dogs and, you know, divorces, marriages and all that. And just you too. Right. But you see, but I, that's why I love, it's like, it, like, it's like an incubator of just your own, your own growth and these phases that you go through. And I think when I was saying that, that quote is you start to harness right? You start to understand and, and, you know, you go through this witnessing of yourself and, you know, and just being able to make, sh you know, shifts in who you are, not judge it so much. Some days you do, but right. You become, you know, more not self-realized. Yes. Self self-realized is really, you know, the long and the short of what, of what it is that, that we're doing, right. Is to, to realize, you know, who you are. So, so, so one of the things that I think that as it relates to what we're going through now is I, I kind of thought this with, with when Trump won the election, I, I felt like, like in the me too thing, I felt like everybody was, had their hands on their hips and they were like, they, they had something to say and damn it, I'm going to say it, you know? <laughs> right. And it, and it actually, I think that's really good. Sometimes I think uh, we become, um, for lack of a better word, I think we flare up a little bit with our, our immaturity or our sloppiness before we, we cultivate maybe a maturity on what it is that we want to say. But there's something in there we want to say. And I, and I felt like that was good with the, even though Trump and all that is horrible, but some people were like, you could tell they had stuff buried down deep and they were getting it out as best they can, as sloppy as it might have looked, right? And so here we are today with COVID and I feel like everybody's got an opinion, you know, and there's a lot of conversations and there's a lot of, you know, fear. And then on the other side of it, there's just so many acts of kindness that are happening and, you know, people in reflection and then, you know, being with kids more and bonding in relationships. And, and so I, I, I feel like we're, we're kind of forced um, in a, in an interesting way to, um, work together on decisions um despite not agreeing and yeah. i think it's powerful yeah that's what i wrote about i found it absolutely fascinating that everyone has judgments about shelter in place but yet we did it here's a good one the idea of wearing a mask i was just like i ain't gonna do it no 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 like i was just now they come in every color you know, <laughs> clothing places are making them. You can buy a unicorn one, you know, you can buy, I mean, right. All of a sudden we got behind it. So there's still judgments about it and there's still messiness, but we came together in this decision. And I, and I, I, I don't know if that's answering your question, but I'm just blown away that, you know, even in our, cause that's what life is. There's differences. Come on. Right. Yeah. But how do we, can we come together on a decision, still have opinions, but back the decision? Yep. Well. I think there's so many people out there trying to divide us. And we think that we're divided, but we're, um, at the end of the day, we have so much more in common than we do differences. We do. Yep. And isn't it cool to see that, uh, I think, I think kindness is an inequality of our soul. And, and I think that it's so fun to see how people are expressing yeah. that, you know, yeah. Even if they hoard tissue, there's something that they're doing that's you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it's interesting time, isn't it? It's it just, really is. It, it, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, tell us about your blog. What's your website? How can people find you? Oh, I'd love it if I'm doing once a week right now. And uh, this is the fifth one I just wrote. And if you go to our website, BikramYogaSanJose.com and you go to, um, I think Jessica's got a tab that says uh, coronavirus update. And I think the blog is underneath that. Hmm. Okay. You'll, 
blog right there. And the latest one is there along with the other four that I've written. I try to write one um, once a month and I have probably for the last 15 years, you know, and I took a little break for a little bit and then, you know, just to stay in touch with our members. And, and I, I wanted to, you know, cause there's a lot of people on social media and then there's a lot that aren't right yeah. too that are, you know, so I wanted to make sure that we stayed in contact with, with our community via internet and also emails and stuff like that you know so. i've always enjoyed back when you were sending out the the newsletters and oh thank you uh, I, I mean it would take me a couple of days sometimes to actually read through the whole thing they're they're no small they are not <laughs> <laughs> and jessica's always on me about that like but, but i get you get going right you oh, know absolutely yeah, yep yeah. but thank you i appreciate that you, you read absolutely those. yep Thank you, everybody, for being on and listening. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Michelle, for oh being here. Oh, my gosh, my pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, for yes, yeah. Take care of yourself. Be safe. Right? And, and well. Out there and do your, do your thing. Take risks. Be bold. Yep. <laughs> Sounds good. Here if, you, if you ever want to email me, that's great, too. So, bye. Zeb, I love you dearly. We'll love you, too. Bye. Bye guys. Thanks for joining everyone. For more great interviews, online yoga classes, and events, come check us out at yogafactory.com.